Okay, I just want to thank you guys for coming back to the show. And I've got some real special guests here today in Billy and Rosette. And uh, this week, you guys, we're coming to you from the beautiful island of Cape Breton. And uh, uh, it's absolutely breathtaking. It is my father's uh, place of birth, and I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, we're staying this weekend at my aunt's house. And uh, these are my aunt's pastors, I think. That's the right way to say it, hey, Aunt Joan? Yeah. And uh, they're a couple that also has a lot of history uh, with my own family. Rosette is my Aunt Faye's good friend. Yeah. And I think uh, even did some ministry at my dad's church a long time ago. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I'm just happy to be here today because I want you to know God is doing something amazing in every corner of this province. And even though we are not aware of it, we can still be assured that he will keep his promises and uh, he will do his work whether we're seeing it or not. And uh, I want to be part of uh, the promoting hand of God for what he's doing in this couple's life. And I've heard so many good things about them uh, through my aunt that I just, I was excited to finally meet them. And uh, for us, this is coinciding with our ability to visit our son, Joel. Uh, he's at a home in Cape Breton. And so we're excited to do, to do that as well tomorrow and on Monday. Uh, but that gives us tonight to meet some new friends and to uh, bring somebody new to you. And right after the interview, uh, I think Bill and Rosette are going to do some singing. Yes. Excellent. We're looking forward to that. And uh, I'll just start off by asking, how did you end up in Cape Breton? Well, I was born here Okay. Uh, in uh, an area called Whitney Pier. Yep. Uh, my dad uh, and mom were both from Cape Breton Island. Yeah. And uh, my grandparents, um, and uh, then they came from other places. But yeah, so I was born in in, in Sydney. What was that? Well, and I met um, Joan and her family because yeah. my grandfather pastored in North Sydney. Oh, okay. And they went to his church in North Sydney. So oh, awesome. I've known them since I've been young. Yeah. So. And you're good friends with my aunt Faye. Very, very good friends with Faye. That's yeah. how you met yeah. up. Yeah. So um, now, the story that I've heard is that you were away in the States. You guys lived in the States for? For a lot of years. A lot of years. We were pasting there almost 25 years. Okay. We there. And what Both. drew you back to Cape Breton? Well, we were just, uh, we were pastoring a great church. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, when we took this church. In Chicago. In Chicago. Wow. Uh, it was prophesied to us that God was putting a gem yeah. in our lap. Amen. And um, because we, we just came through a difficult pastorate, and um, one of the pastors in the area kind of said, I don't have a word for you. It's just, it's for the left. Yeah. Said, the Lord's putting a gem in your lap. Wow. And uh, it was so true. That church was such a blessing. And they were a church that had just gone through a diff difficult time. And we went in, and um, they were just, they had another pastor for about a year yeah. uh, as an interim pastor. And he's retired, actually. He mm -hmm. came back just to. And just had no agenda, just to love the people yes. and help them heal up. And uh, yeah. so when by the time we got there, they're just eager. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it was exciting. Yeah. And um, the city of Chicago, we were in the western suburbs. Wow. There. And um, probably our longest pastor in yeah. one place. In one place. Wow. We were there almost thir thirteen years. 13. Wow. We okay. Pastored there, and then we went from there to we had already pastored here in Cape Breton. Okay. In Lewisburg, we okay. built the little Mighty Fortress Church there. Okay. Our first pastor back yeah. in the church. early 80s. Wow. And then we built the church in Moncton, New Brunswick. Okay. And pastored there for 10 years. Yeah. And went from there into the States. To South Dakota and then Indiana, Indiana and then Chicago. Chicago. So was it like slamming the brakes on when you came home? When you came home well, what from happened? Chicago? I mean, that must, must have been a big change. It was a big change. Yeah. We thought yeah. we were actually going to be retiring there. We thought that would be the church we were going to stay at because it was such a great congregation, a yeah. lot of professional people, that, and a lot of leaders were in our leadership team, so they knew about leadership. They were yeah. just eager to Mommy do anything yeah. and just wanted God to move. And um, so we saw some great things happen, and, mm -hmm. um, and I had no intention of leaving there mm -hmm. um, at all. And mm -hmm. then I got a call from our bishop. 
uh, one day to see if I was interested in taking a church in Zion, Illinois, okay. which was actually a larger church. And uh, I, Rose happened to be down here with her mom, was having surgery. Yeah. So I took the phone and we went on FaceTime. I went to visit the, the town. Yeah. As soon as I got there, I just didn't feel that God was in this, you yeah. know. And so we went there. I showed her the area. And we, were, and we knew right away. Yeah. We knew that this wasn't the Lord, but we prayed about it honestly, and uh, I couldn't wait to get back to our, our church in, yeah. uh, in uh, Carpentersville. Carpentersville. Yeah. So uh, went back, but what it did was it opened up my thinking all of a sudden that the very fact that I was willing to pray about it. Yeah. So Rosette was uh, in Nova Scotia with her, with her mom, and then um, I went down. We went down for yeah. vacation yeah. down here to Cape Breton. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would get up in the morning and go pray. I'd go over to uh, the Old Town Road, it's called, in Lewisburg, and yeah. along the trail there. Yeah. And stand by the water, and I'd pray and seek God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, What would you do, Bill, if I brought you home? It took me full circle. Oh. And uh, I said, Lord, I'd be willing. Yeah. You know, whatever you want. Yeah. We'd been gone 36 years up to this point. Wow. As far as being in yeah. Cape Breton and mm. pastoring in Cape Breton. Yes. You know, yeah. so, you know, um, we knew that it would be, if, if this was what the Lord wanted, that this was going to be a big endeavor. Yeah. Because, you know, we were established, our children were yeah. all living in the States. Oh, yeah, that's big. Parts of ministry, our Brandon. daughter Hannah. Oh, actually, our daughter Hannah had married a Canadian. Mm-hmm from outside of Windsor, Ontario, and they were pastoring also. Oh, wow. So uh, they were with us for 10 years. Well, the one thing about it is, though, you guys knew almost what you were walking back into mm -hmm. yes. because you, you knew the area so you know, probably you, so well. And you know the mindset. Oh, yeah. You know that, you know, like Cape Breton or yeah. Maritime or, or whatever yeah. because there's different mindsets oh, in I, different areas. You know, it's funny that you said that. Because when we were driving through, my wife's just back here. That's why I'm looking back here. Yeah. Um, we were driving through an area, and I said, Len, can you feel that? I said, I can feel something different as we're driving in yes. through this town. Now, it's, I said, it's not bad, yeah. but it's something so different. Mm. Yeah. And uh, areas have that, don't they? That's right. Very much you so. Know. Very much so. And, and I, I don't want to skip you through your story, but I am going to ask you, while you're telling the story, because this is a very Nova Scotia centric show, we are looking and believing for the Spirit of God to do something tremendous in the province of Nova Scotia and in my spirit. And I'm sure it must be in their spirit too mm -hmm. because there's no way these folks have to be here. They do not have to be here other than answering the call of God. Uh, there must be an enthusiasm in your own spirit about what God is about to do or is doing yeah. here in this province. Yeah. And yes. I, there's an excitement. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't know if it's, I don't know, I don't know who's feeling that or how, you know, if out there you guys, you, you know who you are if you're feeling it. But I'd like to hear from these guys um, what they feel God is doing here in Cape Breton, but also in the province of Nova Scotia. Yes. But I don't want to sidetrack you from your story right. because you said you, you, you felt to come back, you got the call while you were out praying yeah, yeah. and you were walking. Well, Jude, too. Uh, oh yeah, my son. Uh, no, well, the thing we know is when we used to come back years ago, yeah, we would feel like a heaviness. Yeah. And then we noticed around 2002, we noticed a shift. Wow. Uh, spiritually. Yeah. You could just sense it. Yeah. You could sense people were getting more open and it wasn't closed off and. Uh, and we even saw it getting better and better. Yeah. So I came down here and I was doing some recording and we were, we did a couple of services at different places. Yeah. And um, my son Judah was with me. He said, Dad, I really feel that, that God's favor is on you here. And I said, really? He said, yeah. <laughs> so I took I said, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> so while we were here for that summer is when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Yes. We happened to be speaking in the church. Yeah. In Lewisburg, one Sunday morning, we did worship, and um, yeah. uh, somebody came up to me and uh, after the service said, "Why don't you come back and do a work?" Yeah, in Sydney. And I kind of laughed because I said, "Well, you know, that's a lot easier to say than 
make it happen. You Absolutely. Know? So anyway, we just said, well, thanks for that. And, and then the person approached us again and said they would support us. Yeah. They would get behind us financially. Wow. To do something. Yes. And I, we just said, well, we, you know, we can't do that. You know, yeah. we, uh, we have a church. We're committed. You know, we didn't want to even give any hope or anything like that. Anyway, so we sort of, not, we didn't laugh it off, but we just laid it down. So yeah. Well, but you never know. And so we went back to home, yeah. which was Chicago at the time. And so about, we started just praying a little bit about it. Yeah. You know, and uh, never felt anything more. And then we get a phone call from a cousin in Montreal that we hadn't talked to in I don't know how many years. Yeah. And uh, she said, Rose, Bill, I really need to tell you, this has been on my heart for two weeks and I'm disobeying God if I don't tell you this. Wow. And I said, well, what's going on? And she said, well, I have a tape from you from 1980, it was like 1982 or 83, yeah. from the little rented hall we were in Lewisburg before we built the church. Wow. Uh, she said, and you're preaching, and I've been listening to the, your sermon all week long, and yeah. God is telling me he's calling you back to Cape Breton. Wow. And we went, thank you for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bye. <laughs> no. And so, <laughs> so that's when we really felt God was really dealing with our hearts. Yeah, yeah. And um, we really began to pray about it then. Yeah. And so we started talking about it, praying about it. I went through a, a program online called The Ark. Yeah. It's to plant a new church. Oh, and okay. some, you know, just to be aware of the new things they're doing today. And, yeah. And, but we knew we, we would have to be God. Yeah. And so, um, so we just started praying about it. We took about a, uh, a year. Okay. And so that person, again, connected with us yeah. and said, are you thinking about it? And they were out west at the time. And this, we said, yes, we are. Yeah. And he was pretty, pretty blown away that we were. And so um, we began to fast and pray Yeah. and ask the Lord, you know, Father, this is what you want. Mm -hmm. Show us. And the funny thing about it was um, we became empty nesters just around the same time. Okay, right on. Our son Judah moved to Nashville. Yeah. Our daughter Bethany moved to uh, so she was a you know, graduated from uh, Mortu Mortuary Science College oh, okay. there, wow. and she went down to do an internship yeah. in Washington, Illinois. Oh. Anyway, so we were empty nesters, so that affected us to some degree. And, sure. And um, anyway, we got to we made the decision. Yeah. And so I said, I am writing the guy tonight when I get home. As soon as I get home, I'm writing and telling him we can't do this. Yeah. We'll do a, a relaunch of our church here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll stir things up and get yeah. excited. <laughs> and we got home. I wrote the letter. Yeah. I didn't send it. I woke up the next morning and God said, don't send that letter. Wow. And so uh, we knew then, you yeah. know, we knew then. And so we, we set a date yeah. uh, to resign. Yeah. And uh, we went to the folk and they were, of course, flabbergasted. And, yeah. Uh, we resigned. We packed up everything we had. Yeah. And, uh, rented a truck and uh, totally stepped out in faith because wow. we had you know we did have some support yeah and but uh, it wasn't enough, nothing like we had we still hadn't sold our home yeah and we we went we went down and so we came here if you don't mind me asking no. um, you know I to you guys it wouldn't seem foreign but when you say you heard you felt yeah right. uh, to the folks watching this, a lot of them, that's foreign language, right? right? That to them is a, a kind of a new new thing, mm -hmm. right. an idea that you can hear or feel something mm -hmm. from, from God. The Lord, yeah. Can you give me an idea how you came about having confidence in hearing and in feeling those things from God? Can you mm -hmm. explain how that came to be in your life? Well, is that is that a, yeah, a, yeah, it's a kind good, of reasonable no, that's yeah. a good question? question. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, for a long time since I, I came to the Lord, you know, I I practiced to some degree listening to God's voice, to, yeah. to, to listen to Him, and then I always looked for a confirmation. Okay. You know, that God would confirm it. Okay. Uh, somehow through um, a miraculous, you know, or or even just practical, but still would have to happen to okay. show me that this was His will and plan for us. The door would have to open, and I'd okay. walk through it. And so this was sort of like that. Although the Holy Spirit, you know, that inner voice, okay. a lot of people don't 
don't practice that. But yeah. people, more and more seem to learn, are learning it. Yeah. But to take time, you know, we often have been trained to have a one-way conversation with God. Right. And we think, well, God just speaks to us through his word. Well, he does. Yeah. But also there's a, a, a place for just quieting ourselves down. Right. And listening for God to speak to us. Yeah. And the more you do that, yeah. um, the more sensitive, sensitive you become, you become to, his, to his, his voice. His yeah. voice, to hear him speak to you. So is that He's, something that sort of develops... Yeah, in time I, in I your life? So. Or what? I, well, I think it takes some faith. Okay. When, I, when, I, when I was saved, when I came to the Lord, God miraculously saved me. Mm -hmm. I, I came, I was on drugs. I was on LSD at about uh, wow. 4 o'clock in the morning. The only wow. time I'd heard about anything being saved was she had shared her need that I needed to be saved. We just moved to the town of Lewisburg. Yes. I was playing in a band and all this stuff. And she told me, I met her a few months before at one of her rehearsals, and she told me um, that night when we were walking through the town of Lewisburg, yeah. You need to be saved. Yeah. And so this terminology <laughs> saved. You got a personal evangelist there. <laughs> anyway, anyway, about two weeks later, the lead guitar player and myself, we were yeah. on drugs and yeah. high as a kite. And I told him about what she was telling me about being saved. Yeah. And out of the blue, he says, I'm saved. <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah. He said, do you really want me to? I said, yes, I want to be saved. He said, well, come in my house. I'll tell you about it. What had, what had happened was... There was a, had been a guy passing through Sydney. Okay. A tourist that had actually led him to the Lord. Wow. And he had this wonderful experience, but he he didn't know anything about going to church okay. or being connected with anything. It was sort of. Anyway, so we go into his kitchen, and he says to me, uh, "So, Bill, you want me to say this? He has to do." He said, "Well, Jesus said, yeah. quote the scripture to me, if any man comes to me, yes, I will in no wise cast him out.' Amen. When he said that scripture to me, when he spoke it to me." The only way I can describe it was it exploded in my heart. Wow. I knew what it meant. I yeah. knew God loved me. Yeah. I knew that he cared for me. Yes. I knew that he wanted me. Yes. And uh, and so he said, pray this prayer with me. Yeah. And he said, when you do, he said, you're going to get this great feeling. Yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> so he took my hands and I prayed, uh, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. Yes. Amen. I believe you died for my sins and yeah. rose again from the dead. Yeah. I believe you're alive. Yeah. Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart yeah. and save me. Yeah. And then he finished. He almost lied to me. Like, I was like, Bobby, I've never felt anything. <laughs> I said, it must be the drugs because Rosette told me drugs was wrong. And so he's not going to save me. Uh, and he went, good. and uh, he said, well, I'm going to bed. You can have crash on the couch. Yeah. So I laid on the couch. And the funny thing is I, being raised a Catholic, yeah. I was raised praying the Our Father okay. every night. Right on. And uh, so I would pray it uh, in my intoxication and everything else, and I would have to pray it over and over to, <laughs> to pray it perfectly. And if I messed up halfway, I have to start all over again. Oh, that was great. And so it was a good thing. It was preparation for what was yeah. going to happen. Amen. So I decided to lay there and pray that prayer. Yeah. I prayed with him over and over again. Wow. I said, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. And I just really tried to feel it with all my heart what I was yeah. saying. Yeah. Forgive me of my sins. Come to my heart. Save me. Yeah. I just kept praying. I might have been there five minutes, ten minutes. I don't know. I just kept praying it over yeah. and over. And all of a sudden, yeah. the Holy Spirit came down wow. and filled me. I jumped up off of the couch. And I mean, I was straight as an arrow. Yeah. Everything was brighter and yeah. clearer. And he came running down the stairs. I said, Bob, I'm saved. I'm saved. Wow. And I said, I'm quitting all this. I'm yeah. leaving. Yeah. And uh, I got out on the road and... It was around 4.30 in the morning or so, or whatever it was, and I, the sun was just coming up, and I hitchhiked home, walked in the door in Lewisburg, said, Mom, I'm saved. I slept for probably, I don't I think it was 24 hours or something. I went to bed and slept. Wow. And um, that was the beginning of my journey. God wow. uh, mightily. And then I got invited by our family yeah. uh, to go to church, yeah. Sydney Pentecostal Church. Yes. And uh, Clyde Slonwit was the pastor there. Okay. And he preached a message, I'll never forget, it's called Meaning Business with God. Yeah. And but this was a couple weeks later, and I knew that what he was saying was right, and I yeah. needed to mean business with God. So I went to the altar, mm. and he, uh, his son came over and led me, knelt with me and prayed. I was the only one. That, I had long hair way down my back. Yeah. I had a denim jacket that had a painting on it. It was a smoke <laughs> Colombian on the back of it. <laughs> I was on my knees. walking to church. <laughs> I was on my knees, and um, 
brother Slon White said, praise God, praise God, this young lady just gave her high five. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's, oh, that, that's how I got saved. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and uh, mm. from there, I was the least in our youth group. Mm. The church was started to really grow then, and I was the least that anyone would have thought would have been called to Bible college or yeah. ministry. And the Lord did it, and I was, I'm so grateful that he did. And her brother and I went off to study at Midwest Bible College in, in Bloomington, Illinois. And is it really that easy to accept Christ just like he just said? Yes. And to see, have your life and heart changed yes. just like that? Just like that. That yes. is amazing. And I Call through, upon the name of the Lord, and thou shalt be saved. saved. And there were struggles. I had my struggles my first year. Yeah. But the Lord, the, that's the great mm -hmm. thing about it is God knows our humanness yeah he knows our weaknesses yes you know the bible says in all points he was tempted like we are yet without sin yes you know there was only one without sin jesus amen we're we are not we fail and do things but god every time picked me up and god showed me his faithfulness over and over amen and finally i was set free from everything yeah filled with the holy spirit yeah and uh ready to serve god i was just ready to serve him i was coming here yeah. As a just a new convert, I go to the nursing homes every Sunday and just share my witness as a wow. young, long-haired guy. Yeah. And, and yeah. try to lead people to the Lord. And wow. Yeah. It was uh, God was so good. Wow. So, so went off to Bible college. Yes. That, That's where the date squares come into play yes, somehow, yeah. somewhere here. Well, what that. happened was this uh, Rose was singing in clubs. Oh, she okay. was away from God. Yeah. So, she so when I witnessed to Bill, I yeah. wasn't serving the Lord. Wow. But I knew that he really needed the Lord. I knew this young man needed the Lord yeah. because he was really, really strung out on drugs. Yeah. So I felt like, and I think in God's mercy, yeah. the Lord, you know, planned this so but Amen. I felt that if he didn't get saved he yeah. would either end up or yeah. dead somewhere yeah. so I shared with him like you know you really need the Lord yeah have you ever been saved <laughs> you need to be saved <laughs> and you were in the bar doing yeah. <laughs> yeah. God's inside woman there you know you got a woman inside there who's you know leading them to Christ that's pretty awesome that's a testimony right there you know, you need to get saved. It's funny, uh, a lady that we interviewed just a few weeks ago, same thing. She said her friends in the bar said uh, said to her, look, you're a lot better person when you're going to church. Get back to church, they told her. Uh, but that's funny. Listen, okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, Billy and Rosette have an awesome story to tell uh, coming up about their church, yes. how they how they figured out where to go with concerning the church, how they purchase the church it is an awesome little story and whatever else they want to share with us. i want to i want them to share with us about their heart and understanding about cape breton in nova scotia and to speak into the church in nova scotia mm -hmm. and so we're going to end this now we're going to thank you very much for coming and listening this week and uh, have an awesome week god bless you and please return for the second part of this interview and uh, it's just going to be the continuation of an awesome story in, in their life. So God bless. We'll see you next week. This is uh, called Just Like Our Fathers Before, and it was taken out of where Jacob saw the angels ascending and descending. He was reliving the covenant of his fathers. We have a great, as God's people, we have a tremendous heritage, uh, a supernatural heritage. And uh, so... It's as real today as it is, as it was back then. And we serve a supernatural God who does the impossible. Just like my father before, I see an open door with angels descending. Angels descending Just like our fathers before us There is an open door With angels descending Angels descending And I will be blessed 
I will be blessed I'm never forsaken And I have found rest Through every trial I only get better and better Cause I'm living under God's open heaven Just like my father before I see an open door With angels descending Angels descending Just like our fathers before us There is an open door With angels descending Angels descending And we will be blessed We will be blessed We're never forsaken, never And we have found rest Through every trial We only get better and better Cause we're living under God's open heaven We praise you Lord And we will be blessed We will be blessed We bless your name We're never forsaken Never forsaken And we have found rest Through every trial we only get better and better Cause we're living under God's open heaven Sing along And you will be You will be blessed You will be blessed You're never forsaken Never And you have found rest Thank you Lord through every trial You only get better and better and better Cause you're living under God's open heaven one more time And I will be blessed I will be blessed Thank you Lord I'm never forsaken and I have found rest Oh, I confess it, Lord Through every trial I only get better and better Cause I'm living under God's open heaven